Hey guys, it's been a little while since my last versus battle, and this one is a doozy. So today's fight is between two men who are nearly invulnerable, have lived very, very long times. Neither character has insane attack power, so you can argue this fight could end in a stalemate. Anyway, please comment, subscribe, for more content like this in the future. Andy, as we're going to call him, is a negator. A negator is someone within the universe of Undead Unluck who negates a rule. The rule in question here is death. So by negating death, he prevents himself from dying, but also rules can be interpreted. So his interpretation can change to boost his attacks or his mobility. Andy regenerates his limbs by considering his cells or individual body parts as quote unquote dying as he can negate this death as to remake his body. This regen is essentially infinite and without true cost, similarly to our main character from Fire Punch. Andy has a leg up here though, as he basically can't die at all, whether it's being hit by meteors or later chapters literally sitting on the face of the sun. Time for more lore, as the story does have a fairly complicated power system. Andy has a major thing going for him when a certain UMA is added. UMAs are rules out in the wild, and this rule we'll talk about is Ghost. Without Ghost, there is no spirit manipulation, what the shit? which is an ability that Andy learns and uses to great effect. Ghost is only added later on in the loop, and we will not be considering him in the first battle, as within the first battle we are considering him at the start of the show, and he wouldn't get this Ghost until near the end of the second season, or part of the second season. This spirit power would put Agni to shame for sure, so we are ignoring it for the moment in the first fight, as we will do three separate considerations. Really quickly, let me explain a few things. This universe is essentially the sun and the moon fighting a posture war, using monsters known as UMAs, or rules, for the sun, with the moon using artifacts and negators, and people in general, with the hopes of beating the sun in a final climactic battle. This conflict is a cyclical system, also known as loops. Loops are all the time up until the final fight between the sun and the moon, with the universe resetting all for one person at the end. This person actually lives forever, or can't die normally, during that next loop, but not really that important right now. This loop concludes in that final battle that I mentioned previously between the Sun and the Negator group. So far, the Sun has not lost at all, but maybe they will in the manga, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. Back to artifacts. One of these artifacts is called Remember, can be used a few different ways, but what we want to talk about here is that it was used to create Andy. So, Andy is not just Andy. Andy was first Victor. Victor is the first personality that lasted 100 loops, and is a lot more skilled than Andy at the start of the series. Since death is one of the first rules, its antithesis, or negator, is as well. And in total, Andy slash Victor has lived billions of years per loop, totaling in the trillions overall. All but 150 years of that time is allotted for Andy, the start of the series, but this is not true for Victor or Andy in his second loop. Since Victor, and by extension Andy, have quite a lot of experience in fighting, for these fights, both will be considered combat geniuses and capable of lots of complicated deductions, even in a short period of time, which is frequently showcased in the show. Before we go on, only one person survives per loop. So, why has Undead been the same person this whole time? Usually negators change host when they die, and in some ways you can actually access your previous hosts. Undead cannot really die, so he can't switch hosts, so he stays the same guy forever, even if loop resets. This actually gets so bad that Whis, the former partner of Victor, is the reason that Andy exists, as she is the one who implanted Remember into his brain and causes the start of the story. Victor also could handle the Union, which is the negator group that fights the Sun, all by himself essentially. He's that strong, like he's, he's way stronger than Andy at the start of the series, and is basically a completely different character. Enough talking about Andy slash Victor, let's talk about Agni. Now we have to talk about Fire Punch. Reading this sucked, and I'm glad my viewers don't have to read it themselves here, as I'll explain in detail what you need to know without too much prior information. Agni is our main character, he lives in a village with him and his sister as orphans. He feeds everyone in this town with his arm, which they cut off. How do they do this? This works as Agni is blessed. The blessed have special powers and Agni's blessing is to be a regenerator. Agni is the strongest when it comes to regen, however this may be a curse in disguise. A group of soldiers roll up and find out the starving people of this village are cannibals, so Doma, the leader of this group, takes us into his own hands. Doma is a fire blast, and this blessing is downright diabolical, burning you down until nothing but ash is left. This attack wipes out Agni's whole village, setting both Agni 
and his sister Luna ablaze. Even though Luna is also blessed, her regen is not enough to withstand the flames, but she had enough just to say, brother, live. People dying and telling Agni to live happens all the time, and this manga did actual damage to my psyche for it. So, since this fire ability burns you to ash, Agni is regenerating the whole time. So, since he's stuck in a loop between being burnt completely and regenerating completely, he's just essentially on fire forever. Anyway, it took him eight entire years to even breathe and move with this fire coating his entire body, burning him the entire time. So, the two powers Agni has is both regenerating and being unfiring. He's not as quite as strong as Andy, is what I might say after Andy gets some training. Doma's fire is extremely strong, even a tiny bit of it touching you is enough to kill you, as it burns you to a crisp by default. Most of Agni's strength is purely durability, but he does have a power suit for one instance in particular. This is the birth of the eponymous Fire Punch, as before people just called him Fire Guy or Agni. Here is Togata, who is leading Agni around as if he were in a movie. She, actually he, actually whatever, sets up Agni to fight a shit ton of the strongest convicts of Behemdolg. The soldiers from earlier are Behemdolg soldiers, it's not super important, and also it's a, it's a really weird name, like who says Behemdolg? This is why he has a super suit, etc., and this is how he becomes Fire Punch. It's a lot more complicated than that, but we don't have all day. This fire retardant suit also prevents Agni from looking naked, and also has a big punchy mechanism. Because being naked is bad for movies, as well as YouTube videos. So we cut back briefly to Togana explaining the mechanism of this suit. The suit, essentially, is just, you say Fire Punch, and then you do a big Fire Punch. I know, very, very complicated. So, let's talk about Doma again. Doma killed his sister, he's kind of evil, he's been locked up in asylum for figuring out the grand conspiracy of Behemdolg. There's, there's a lot going on here, it's not super important, but really, the main thing we want to talk about is Agni really, really wants to kill this guy. So, since this guy's been on fire for years and everyone close to him dies, Agni has completely lost it. His journey to take out Doma has been a living nightmare, killing hundreds of civilians in Behemdolg for essentially no reason. And when he gets to Doma, Doma has kids to take care of. He thinks he can let himself let Doma live, but his brain disagrees. A vision of his sister tells him that Doma is just faking it to survive. Agni says he's worshipped as a god and the main character, but Luna says become Fire Punch, wiping off any edifice of a real face. Agni isn't Agni anymore, he's Fire Punch, and he finally gets his revenge on Doma, killing Doma and any children he had around him in a just brutal fiery mess. I'll be considering this more enraged and deranged version of Agni for this fight, but also call him Agni for the sake of continuity. Not only does he do this, but then he tries to jump in a lake, because you know, to extinguish the fire or something, and Togata comes to save him. Now we'll skip forward a bunch to the end of the story. A lot of horrible things happen, but let's focus on Agni's fight with San. San has an electricity blessing and beats the absolute crap out of Agni. The attacks that San does, I would say, are on par with, if not above, almost anything we'd see in Undead Unluck, but you know, it's, it's hard to say for sure. Even electrifying him to a crisp. However, this is not enough to kill Agni, which is a testament to his durability, and with, you know, just a tippy touch on his pinky toe, Agni kills San as well. San was the main worshipper of Agni and kept his whole church going for all this time, all just to be killed by him in the end. So after this, Agni is killed by an ability that negates his regeneration and responds him essentially. This version of Agni, which is also called San, it's, it's weird, um, can live forever and presumably the regular version can too. So if it came to a situation where neither Andy or Agni could kill each other, neither would die of old age. First fight is Agni versus Andy from the start of the anime. Andy has no powers outside of regeneration, genus intellect, and essentially being unkillable, plus using his body parts as weapons. Agni has regeneration, flames that can burn anything to a crisp, and his power suit. Andy fires off some finger bullets, which he does by damaging them and purposefully regenerating them. 
these fingers would either pierce Agni's armor or ping off. And even if they did pierce his armor, Flames of Doma would reduce or entirely negate this damage. Now, the fight starts to close the distance, with Andy trying to use his bones as blades, as he frequently does. This allows Agni to land his signature fire punch. Let's be real. Andy would not die from this, but in the case of being pushed to desperation, he can pull out a metal square from his head. So I mentioned the artifact remember earlier, right? Andy only exists due to this artifact being embedded in his brain. Now, as a last resort and a potential stalemate, Andy is taking this out and releasing Victor. Victor crushes Agni as he can do clone attacks, has millennia behind him, and can slash Agni to the point he can't regenerate. So, like Andy, Victor can use finger attacks, but he can also use Dead Road, which is essentially what I think wins at the fight here. It's a torrent of blood akin to a Kamehameha wave, and under this intense pressure, Agni would crumble. So even if somehow Agni could be a noob Andy, Victor would save the day. Agni can be killed by regular means, even though regular is a bit of a stretch. But the only thing to kill Agni is a tree that negates his ability. Even though I already think Victor would win this fight, it's still worthwhile to mention the 101st loop version of Andy. This fight is just silly, as he can just manipulate the soul of Agni, as well as he has fire resistance. How good is that fire resistance, you may ask? Well, since the start of the loop, he has sat on the face of the sun. Delma's fire is pretty hot, but Andy could just drag Agni via soul chains and incinerate him with the nearly 10,000 degree surface of the sun. In a less drawn out fashion, he could just damage Agni's soul directly with Soul Road. Dead Road, I already think is enough to kill Agni, and this version is just way stronger. I know this fight isn't particularly fair, but I think it's really interesting to compare two characters whose main power is simply just not being able to die very easily. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how these abilities interact. Thank you for watching to the end. If you watch this far, make sure to comment like banana.